we have a plane and we are given three points on the plane and we need to come up with the equation of that plane. Now this is not drawn to scale of course, but for the purposes of finding the equation, what we want to do is draw a vector through two of the points. So for example, we could extend a line passing through these two points and we could call that vector A. And what we want to do is come up with a representation of vector A. And you probably learned about how to do that in an earlier section of this chapter. But to review that, we can look at the first point and just call those coordinates x1, y1, and z1. And then we can look at the second point and call those coordinates x2, y2, z2. And basically, we're going to subtract the x components, y components, and z components. Just make sure that you subtract x2 by x1, y2 by y1, and z2 by z1. So for example, we're going to have 1 minus 0, and then 0 minus 1, and then 1 minus 1. So again, we subtracted the second coordinates by the first set of coordinates. And when we simplify this, we get a vector representation of vector a. We get 1, negative 1, 0. So that's great. Now we want to do the same thing to come up with what we can call vector b. So we'll extend another vector from that initial point through the third point. We're going to call that vector b. And then these coordinates over here can now serve as our x2, y2, and z2. So again, we can come up with a vector representation by subtracting the second set of coordinates by the first set of coordinates. So 1 minus 0 for x, 1 minus 1 for y, and then 0 minus 1 for the z. And when we simplify that, we have vector b equaling 1, 0, negative 1. Now, you might wonder, well, why would we do that? Why would we come up with two vectors on this plane? And it turns out that in a moment, we're going to do what's called the cross product between vector A and vector B. Why would we do that? Because when we cross those two vectors, we're going to get a third vector that is perpendicular to both vector A and vector B. And if you look at this drawing, when we draw a vector that's perpendicular to vector a and b, it's also going to be perpendicular to the plane. And that's key, because once we have a vector that is perpendicular to the plane, we have the so-called normal vector. We always need a normal vector when trying to create the equation of a plane. So in summary, we're going to cross or compute the cross product of vectors a and b, and that's going to give us the normal vector. So let's set that up. So we've written down vectors a and b, and then we've set up the so-called cross product. And this is a typical way of setting up your cross products. You basically just put the vector a along the first row and then your vector b along the second row. And now to actually compute the cross product, we're going to do something very carefully here. We're going to cover up the first column, so the i column. And then we're going to actually compute a 2 by 2 determinant, which just means that we cross multiply. We multiply those two numbers to give us positive 1. We multiply those two numbers to give us 0. And then we subtract that result. So we'll simplify that in a minute. To get the next component of the normal vector, we're going to do something similar. We're going to cross off this middle column here. We're going to do a 2 by 2 determinant. So we're going to do 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1. We're going to do 1 times 0 which is zero, we're gonna subtract them. Just be careful here because for this middle component, just wanna make sure that you negate it. You will always negate that middle component. So don't forget that step. And then we're going to cover up the third column and do another and final two by two determinants. So we're gonna have one times zero, which of course is zero, and then one times negative one, which is negative one. We're gonna subtract those. So you're actually going to subtract a negative, we'll end up adding that. So this will be the normal vector. We want to simplify this. So our normal vector is going to equal, let's see, 1 minus 0 is 1. We have negative 1, but then we negate that, so that's positive 1. And then we have 0 plus 1 there, so that's a 1 as well. So look at that. The normal vector is 1, 1, 1. That's fantastic. Let's go back and take a look at our plane. There it is, it's got those three points. We're emphasizing just one of the three points. We have arbitrarily selected the 0, 1, 1 point. You could pick the other two points if you, or one of the other two points if you wanted to. But what we're basically about to do is just simply plug the normal vector that we obtained earlier along with this point on the plane into the scalar equation of a plane. Here is the scalar equation of the plane. And it's very easy to plug in because you have these direction numbers for your normal vector. These are represented as a, b and c. 
We're going to be plugging those into these spots right here. And then we have the point on the plane. We can symbolize that with a coordinates of x naught, y naught, and z naught, and those get plugged into these spots in the equation right here. So let's go ahead and plug everything in. And there it is, the equation of the plane containing those three points. We could simplify by distributing those ones. So basically we're just going to be left with x plus y minus 1 plus z minus 1 is equal to 0. Typically we combine the constant terms, so this minus 1 minus 1 makes a minus 2. x plus y plus z minus 2 equals 0. And then we add 2 to both sides so that we isolate the variables. x plus y plus z is equal to 2. That is the equation of the plane that contains all three of those points. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. Of course, do not feel obligated to do so. I appreciate you taking the time to watch regardless.